Hello, this is Mr. Barrett again, and this time I'm going to read you a story that uh, does not have an AR test, um, and probably won't find this book. It's pretty rare. It's called Maurice the Unbeastly, and it's actually written by my wife's friend, Amy Dixon. I believe they went to school together a long time ago. And it's illustrated by Carl James Mountford. Maurice the Unbeastly. And actually, if you look right here, she dedicated it, Amy Dixon did, for Isaiah, Jillian, and Montgomery. Best wishes from Amy Dixon. Those are my kids. Maurice was not like the other beasts. His voice was sweet and refreshing as dandelion lemonade on a hot day. And he preferred his snacks green and organic. And he was ridiculously photogenic. Means he took good pictures of himself. Mama and Papa Beast were concerned. Beast roar, said Mama. And destroy, bellowed Papa. You must be more, less civilized, Mama said. We are enrolling you in the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Maurice munched quietly on his kale kebab and mulled this over. He was a beast. He was supposed to be fierce and ugly and gruff. But he didn't want to be a gargantuan failure. So he tidied up his room, packed up his alfalfa fritters, and headed off for the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. The Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Hear us roar, hit the floor, we're the mighty carnivore. Our first lesson, growled the headmaster, will be the frightening roar. The beast responded in a chorus of terrifying shouts, except for Maurice, whose voice rose above the rest in a perfect high A. A note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice's roar is definitely melodious and delightful to the ear. Lesson number two, the headmaster snarled, is messy meat eating. The beast ripped and ravaged through the meat feast before them, except for Maurice, who placed a napkin in his lap and said, Excuse me, please, but is there a vegetarian option? Another note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice is terribly neat and polite, and we had to confiscate his alfalfa fritters. That means to take them away, compensate. Next, said the headmaster, we destroy. And each beast in the room crashed and crushed and wrecked and ruined. Except for Maurice, who dashingly dodged and stylishly sidestepped the mayhem. You're much too light on your feet, the headmaster scolded. Just when Maurice thought it couldn't get any worse, picture day arrived. One by one, the beasts thundered through the line, their hideousness shattering camera lenses. Maurice was determined to get this one right. He growled and snarled and howled. The photographer still captured the perfect glamour shot. One last note went home. If Maurice insists on continuing to smile, he will never progress. Maurice was beginning to feel as if the abominable Academy for Brutish Beast was a gargantuan mistake. Just then, a ruckus erupted in the classroom. That means like a, a lot of noise and stuff. An unidentified creature had infiltrated the academy. One beast roared, but the creature roared right back. Another beast bravely tried to catch it, but she stomped much too slowly. All the beasts quivered and quaked. Except for Maurice, who sat shade to the left and flashed his winning smile. Here, creature, creature, he sang. The creature stopped and looked with big eyes at Maurice. Maurice pulled a hidden alfalfa fritter out from his pocket and held it out. 
The other beast watched in amazement as the creature bounded over to Maurice and curled up in his lap. Teach us this creature magic, the headmaster said. And so Maurice was named the official creature whisperer of the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. He was a gargantuan success. His paper, Coaxing Creatures 101, Using the Beast's Softer Side, won first prize in the school essay contest. Coaching Creatures 101, Using the Beast's Softer Side. He led a campaign to add kale to the lunch menu. Raise your tail for kale. Kale on the menu. And he started the Academy's first a cappella group, the Barbatones. Maurice was definitely not like the other beasts. And thank goodness for that. That end. Maurice the Unbeastly by Amy Dixon.